by Jenny Long from Utah State University, and we're going to hear some about pasture-based dairies. And uh, this is now seems to be working, so okay. should be good. So my research looks on the impact of pasture-based dairies on nitrogen cycling when comparing grazing grass monocultures to grass legume mixtures. Um, so. In the West, we have roughly 3.5 million uh, dairy cows, and then we're seeing an increase in pasture-based dairies due to the um, increase of organic milk costs or price per gallon. And um, organic dairies have the requirement that they have to graze for 120 days a year, and they're required to get their uh, at least 30% of dry milk intake from the pasture during those 120 days. The advantages to organic dairy pastures is that you have a decre decrease in feed costs, especially when you're comparing to having to buy organic feed. Um, but the disadvantage is the seasonal variability in the production of forage, and we can see an increase in the parasite load since we can't deworm in organic dairies. Um, the problem is that monoculture grasses require larger amounts of fertilizer than when you're mixing with a legume. And fertilizer, especially when you're buying organic, is much more expensive and the price of fertilizer is increasing. Um, and grass legume mixtures can reduce that need to put as much fertilizer out. Um, legumes can increase the blood urea nitrogen, which in effect can decrease um, reproduction rates. And so this study is part of a larger study that examines the economic, reproductive, and environmental impact of grass legume mixtures in a grazing system. And then the environmental impacts of grazing are that less than 5% of the nitrogen that cattle consume is retained in the bodies, and the, the <coughs> rest is, is excreted through the urine and feces. A urine patch out in the field can have the equivalent of 800 to 1,000 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And urine is uh, quickly converted to ammonia and volatilized into the atmosphere, which help, increases methane emissions and greenhouse gas emissions. Tannins can bind proteins in the rumen, and that can lead to increases in the rate of gain and shift the nitrogen from the urine to the feces. The overall goal of our study is to determine the impact of grass legume mixtures on nitrogen cycling in a pasture-based system. Um, we're looking at the impact of tannins on nutrient cycling, and specifically in the bird to tree flow that we're using and determine the impact of the increased uh, soluble carbohydrates and total digestive nutrients on nitrogen cycling. And the third thing we're looking at is assessing the impact of the root structure on nitrogen capture. Um, the treatments we're using are perennial ryegrass, and then perennial ryegrass mixed with bird to tree foil. And then we have orchard grass, orchard Orchard grass mixed with bird to tree foil, <coughs> tall fescue, tall fescue mixed with bird to tree foil, uh, metal bone grass, and then metal bone grass mixed with bird to tree foil. And then we also have a feedlot TMR control treatment. Uh, we do rotation grazing up at our Lewiston pasture facility. It's like 15 miles north of Logan, Utah. Um, we have five paddocks per treatment within those eight grazing treatments. Um, we rotate the cows every seven days, and we have three Jersey heifers per paddock. Um, the average starting weight for the three years was roughly 434 pounds per heifer, and we had a total of nine heifers per treatment. Um, every 35 days, we run them through a chute and do weights, urine, and fecal. So for our materials and methods, um, we fertilize with Chilean nitrate at 150 pounds per acre. We fertilize every treatment um, in April, and then again we use Chilean nitrate to fertilize in just the monocultures in July. Um, we put feather mill every treatment at 50 pounds per acre in June. Urine samples were collected every five weeks um, throughout the grazing rotation. And then I analyze them for urea on a latchet flow injection analyzer. Fecal samples, we do grab fecal samples every five weeks throughout the grazing rotations, and then they 
have been analyzed for nitrate nitrogen on by, or sorry, total nitrogen and total carbon by the combustion method on the elementar. Uh, leachate was collected using zero tension lysimeters, and this is what they look like when they go in. It's uh, 15 inch diameter and 44 uh, deep soil core. It's at the bottom of stainless, expanded stainless steel, and then um, there's a collection reservoir, and then we have tubing six feet down that runs up to the trailer, and we can spring our generator up there in a vacuum pump and collect it that way. Uh, we collect them every other week and they're analyzed for nitrate nitrogen using the latchet as well. So for the results we've seen so far, um, in leachate we have less leachate in all of our uh, grass and boom mixtures and an increase in all of our monocultures and that's most likely due to them being fertilized more than our mixtures are. Uh, for urine, there's an increase in the mixtures due to the increase in the protein level in the um, grass legume mixtures. Uh, for total nitrogen in the feces, we see the same thing as we do with urine with the higher amounts of nitrogen in the mixtures due to the higher amount of protein in the um, roots fit tree oil treatments. Um, for the total carbon in feces, we didn't really see a difference. They're all about the same per treatment. And for average daily gain, they gained more on every um, bird's foot tree foil mixture, with the highest being the perennial ryegrass bird's foot tree foil. So, in conclusion, um, heifers on the grass legume mixtures with bird's foot tree foil had the highest average daily gain. The grass legume mixtures had a higher protein content in the floor, resulting in higher nitrogen levels in the urine feces. And the grass legume burst to tree floor mixtures exhibited less nitrogen loss through leaching than the grass monocultures. Any questions? Yes? Um, urine patch, you mentioned um, volatilization. Yes. Uh, how much volatilized? So I have soil samples, I have not analyzed them yet. So I don't know off the top of my head what the ratio is to volatilization versus what stays in the soil. Um, we won't be able to tell that. It is a sandy soil. A fair soil it will infiltrate very rapidly. Soil that's fine. Yeah. Um, Lee Chase, yes. were you able to force that to happen by adding water? Did you need so we irrigate, but we aren't forcing it to happen as because we are seeing it now with just snow melt and runoff. So, um, but we do irrigate, I think, at roughly uh, one and a half inches per week in the summer. Yes? On, on that leachate question, I may have missed this. Were you managing for a set level of nutrients across all the different dry like test mixes? You mentioned you put fertilizer on the, on the monoculture. So we put fertilizer on the birds with tree foil mixtures as well in April. The same kind of NPK. Yeah, the same. The when we apply, we apply the same ratio to 